When it comes to naming churches in Litchfield Diocese, he's as popular as St Paul. Yet visit a local library and you won't find a single book about him. Until this week. In the past year he's inspired the formation of a new community and a new route of pilgrimage. So what do we know about St Chad? Uh, since this is nearly 1400 years ago, it's amazing how much we do know. And what we know, we know mostly through the Venerable Bede and his writings. And he had a direct link to Chad through uh, one of Chad's disciples who was Bede's teacher. And we know that Chad was uh, an Englishman trained in an Irish monastery on Lindisfarne by Aden, and therefore was one of those people that we would now call Celtic Christians living a monastic lifestyle. The community of St Chad is, is a modern development. It, it came about, you might say, when Philip Swan uh, arrived in the diocese and had a real sense of calling that, that God wanted uh, him to be instrumental in setting up a community that would bring people into deeper discipleship. Chad isn't as well known a character as Bede, as Aidan, as Augustine. What's special? What did he do? What did he achieve? I think what's special about him is that he, he has succeeded in establishing, re-establishing the gospel in York and uh, Northumbria over a four-year period and then really solidly establishing the gospel in uh, the Mercia, the West Midlands, Midlands region of the country so that from uh, his time onwards there was never any doubt it was going to be Christian. We owe a massive debt to him. Out of a conversation uh, that developed uh, what turned into a great momentum with, with all sorts of people trying to dream of what it would be to be disciples living in some form of dispersed community today with, with something that was relevant. Uh, from that dreams came the, the idea of the five rhythms of, of grace which, which really helped to frame who we are as members of the community of St Chad and again from that came all of the various resources that we subsequently developed. One of the issues of Chad's life is, um, is, that, uh, is the issue of uh, prayer and worship and rhythms of, of uh, life uh, and yet at the same time an engagement with society, everyone from rich to poor, from rulers to the, uh, the, the beggars, that everyone's life was touched. So they lived this, this almost this two-winged sort of existence between uh, m meeting with God, being serious about meeting with God and yet being totally uh, committed to um, helping people find the light of Christ. When I came here I saw that we had to grow the church in many parts of the diocese again. The danger of that though, going for growth, was that it might in some places become mechanical or be a kind of technique, neglecting the spiritual foundations. And the great thing about the community of St Chad is that it's been a, an, an obvious demonstration that uh, uh, prayer and the spiritual disciplines must come first. Indeed, they're the foundation of our relationship with God and it's only if we have those there as foundation that we will truly be able to uh, see the church grow again. It's something we do as part of St Leonard's Church in Manningsley. What we, what we, we just decided as a, as a church was that a number of us wanted to go a little bit deeper. Um, um, and in, in that sense, um, the, the, the rhythms, the, 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 the booklets have, have enabled us to, to do that. I think it's important that the community is for everybody. It isn't just led by um, clergy in the diocese. It's not just for people in the Litchfield Diocese. It really serves a purpose for anybody who wants to think a little bit about what it means to live out discipleship today, to follow the rhythms of grace. And what particularly draws me to the community of St Chad is that I think it has a very generous vision of what discipleship is like. And it's very much about um, first receiving God's grace and then responding to that rather than kind of tick boxes and um, putting effort in and um, guilt and, and all the things that sometimes can take over um, when we try and be more Christ-like. And then there are a number of specific things we try to do each year so that there's enough of a sense of being part of something wider and beyond just something immediate. And these would include an experience of pilgrimage, mm. they'd include a teaching evening and a quiet day retreat. Uh, and we hope to encourage people to be part of those initiatives. What's the community bringing that parishes can't provide? 
parishes are at the, the, the heart of, of Christian discipleship and worship and, and commitment and community and we, we recognise that. Uh, what the community of St Chad can do is is to support and, and encourage wonderful work that's going on in so many parishes throughout the, the Diocese of Litchfield. It gives us a, a sense of, of unity, a sense of, of walking together. And if it's helpful to buy for, for parishes to buy into some of the things that we offer as a community, then, then that's good. We started doing it, I think, last Lent, and it made a big difference to me in the way that I pray every day um, for a start because I'd go through the days which are, which are shown and I'd, I'd do the prayers and um, it, I also like reading all the other prayers as well because there are some lovely ones in the book but when we had our meetings we would go through the rhythms of grace and talk about where, where we were at as individuals and uh, yeah, it's just been really good. Sometimes I struggle with prayers, so when you've got them, the, the, some of the prayers are just so beautiful. It just really is. The literature is just amazing, and it it just it has made my faith better. My journey, it's because it's I'm constantly on a journey, and it's just that one step closer to God, and it just really is a wonderful community to be a part of. Today really marks quite a kind of change in the life of the community in that uh, Barry Wilson who's been with us from the beginning really is moving on and it's wonderful that Linz has agreed to be co-leader and we want to embody that sort of team approach because part of the ethos of the group really is to have these small companion groups as well and they're really important almost like a kind of spider's web just different elements working together and meeting over the last 10 years i'd um uh, seemed to keep on bumping into chad i helped a friend of mine david pott to plant what we called in the early days the st chad's way which is now called the two saints way a pilgrimage uh, then i bumped into philip swan and uh, barry wilson of the community of st chad the staffordshire hoard was discovered which sort of links right back to the second half of the 7th century, St Chad's time period. Um, a, a seal was found from Stone Priory in a field in Cobham in the summer of 2011, bearing the name of St Wolfhard, who was a, um, a convert of Chad. And, and so uh, in the last 10 years, the Litchfield Age Angel, of course, was discovered just 10 years ago this year. All sorts of things that happened that seemed to keep on in their different ways, independently pointing back to Chad in his time. It seemed like a good spur. What really sealed it for me was uh, when I decided to do it, I went to Litchfield Cathedral and asked in the bookshop to buy every book they had about St Chad and was told, we don't have any, we don't have one book about St Chad. I think that's what sealed it for me. It's about time there was a, a, an up-to-date uh, retelling of the story and its relevance today.